Hey everybody, I'm Rudy Stankwitz. This is the Talking Pools Podcast, and it's Friday. We made it another week under our belts, and that much closer to the traditional end of the season. Before we get there, I did want to talk about a few things. One, ORP, oxidation reduction potential. What is it? How does it work? How does it benefit us? The other thing I wanted to talk about was how to discover an underserved niche in your market. I heard a story, I thought it was pretty good. An Italian guy up in New Jersey, older man, known for his tomatoes, every year goes out, plants a beautiful tomato garden, always has tons and tons of this fruit, gives away baskets of tomatoes to the neighbors, to family members, they make sauce, all kinds of things beautiful, nice, red, ripe tomatoes every year. And everybody in the neighborhood looks forward to it. But the gentleman's getting older, and it's getting more and more difficult for him to dig up the area where he plants his garden each year. He has a son. His name is Vincent. Usually, he could help, but Vincent, unfortunately, is in prison. So the father upset, he sits down and he writes a letter to his son. Dear Vincent, I don't know if I'm going to be able to plant my garden this year. It's getting to be too much work. It's just too hard for me to overturn the dirt to even begin. A couple of days pass by. The father gets a letter in the mail from his son from a correctional facility and says, Dear Dad, whatever you do, don't dig up the area where you normally plant the garden. That's where the bodies are buried. And the fathers are taken back by this. The FBI comes out. They dig up the entire backyard, find nothing, apologize to the old man, say, Hey, you know, we're sorry. We dug up your whole lawn, but we couldn't find anything. So the father sits down and he writes his son a letter. Dear Vinny, you're not going to believe what happened today. The FBI came out and they dug up the entire backyard, including the area where I normally plant my garden. A day or two later, the father gets the letter, the, another letter from the correctional facility from his son, Vincent. And it says, dear dad, that's the best I could do to help you with your garden this year under the current circumstances. Love, Vinny. What's up, guys? Pete the Pool Guy, Coachella Valley Pools, Daily Dose, Tip of the Day, Tip of the Day. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who answered my previous post with the question, how much do you charge for unscheduled service visits? What I meant by the question was, you have a client that you service the pool once a week or twice a week, and they call you up and they're like, Pete, I need you to swing by and give my pool an extra cleaning because I'm gonna have a party or whatever the case may be. So it's an unscheduled visit. Nothing special, nothing not, nothing out of the, what is out of the ordinary because it's an unscheduled visit, but you know what I mean. So it's just more of a come come through, clean the pool. How much are you going to charge me? You know, so it was interesting to see the pricing on how people charge. So I wanted to break down what I uh, charge and how I came up with that number. All right. So th th this is an example. I'm going to give you guys an example and then break it down. OK, so if I have a client that I charge per month for twice a week service, Here's how I calculate for an additional unscheduled visit. This is how I came up with it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the cost per visit. So $2 per month for eight visits twice a week equal cents per visit. Okay. On top of that, I'm going to add a premium because it's an unscheduled visit. So any a premium should typically be anywhere from 25 to 50% of the per visit cost. Okay. So what i do is i break it down on the calculator right make it a lot easier so for 25 percent premium you're going to type in 0 0.25 times the then whatever answer you get you're going to add to your total and it's going to give you a total of 50 percent premium you're going to type in 0 0.50 times then whatever the answer is you're going to add cents giving you the total of so what I like to do, okay, I'm going to round up to bucks for the visit for the unscheduled visit. I feel that charging for the unscheduled visit is is fair. Um, and obviously it also t takes it. I got to take into consideration um, if it's a windy season and it's those kind of visits, then obviously I'm going to add a little bit more to it uh, because of the extra work. But if it's just a regular week, no wins or nothing, it's just, I'm going to charge bucks. That's how I came up with it. So I wanted to share that with you guys and have yourself a good one. Remember, this is for learning. This is to improve ourselves. If you have a 
a, a better way of doing it or uh, um, you feel like, okay, you could be charging this much more, break it down for me on the comments and let's learn together. All right, guys, let's improve this industry together. Have a good one. Tip of the day. Tip of the day is brought to you by Coachella Valley Pools of Instagram. Did you know Raypack has a free mobile app called Raymode that allows you to control your pool heater from anywhere 24 and 7? Their Avia and Crosswind V pool heaters have built-in Wi-Fi capabilities, allowing you to monitor multiple customer units remotely once connected through the web dashboard. You can track heater status, service alerts to help dispatch technicians or schedule routes, as well as stay informed with real-time updates. If you're looking to simplify your service experience, help resolve customer problems and save time, download Raymote mobile app today. What are you waiting for? Download the Raymote mobile app today or learn more at www.raypack.com forward slash remote. Now to the pool stuff. Let's talk about ORP first, then we'll get into discovering an underserved niche. One of the key metrics used to gauge water treatment in swimming pools is ORP, oxidation reduction potential. It's not the measurement of the oxidizer or the sanitizer disinfectant in the water. It's the measurement of the oxidizing capacity of the water. Let me explain. ORP is the water's ability to either oxidize or reduce substances, which directly relates to the pool's ability to keep contaminants at bay. I also wanted to touch on some of the factors that can influence your ORP readings, some specific scenarios, but also the phenomena that occurs when cyanuric acid is in use, specifically how ORP is higher in the morning then it goes down throughout the course of the day. Again, ORP is measured in millivolts and reflects the overall chemical activity in the pool, particularly in the terms of oxidation, which is critical for disinfection. In a swimming pool, ORP primarily gauges the effectiveness of oxidizer and disinfectant. Chlorine, when added to water, forms both hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions. Hypochlorous acid is the more powerful oxidizer and is largely responsible for breaking down organic contaminants, bacteria, and algae. We sometimes call hypochlorous acid the killing form of chlorine. The ORP sensor, typically comprised of a platinum electrode, measures the potential difference between the electrode and a reference electrode submerged in pool water. The resulting ORP value indicates how readily the water can engage in oxidation reactions, and thus how effective it is at maintaining a clean and safe swimming pool. For optimum water quality, the ORP in a swimming pool should be maintained between 650 and 750 millivolts. This range ensures the water in the swimming pool has sufficient oxidation potential to neutralize harmful pathogens effectively. However, achieving and maintaining this range requires a nuanced understanding of the factors that can influence ORP. The disinfectant used is the primary driver of ORP. We're going to talk about chlorine because that's the most common disinfectant used in swimming pools. Free chlorine, like I mentioned before, exists in two forms, hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion. The balance between the two is dictated by the pH level. We've heard this, chlorine's effectiveness is pH dependent. The lower the pH, the greater the amount of hypochlorous acid, and the lower, the lesser the amount of hypochlorite ion. The greater the pH, the higher the pH, the greater amount of hypochlorite ion, the lower or lesser the amount of hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid is far more effective at oxidizing than hypochlorite ion, so its presence is crucial for maintaining a high ORP. If the free chlorine levels are low, the ORP will drop, indicating decrease in the pool's disinfection capacity. pH has a profound effect on ORP. At a lower pH, around 7.2, a greater proportion of chlorine exists as hypochlorous acid, roughly 66% which enhances ORP. As the pH rises, as the pH increases, more chlorine converts to hypochlorite ion, which is less effective at oxidation, thereby lowering the ORP. So I gave you at 7.2, 66% hypochlorous acid, or we'd say 66% effective. At 7.5, 50% hypochlorous acid, or 50% effective, but it also has to then be 50% hypochlorite ion. Think of it as two parts of a whole. 
hypochlorous acid, hypochlorite ion, together make up your free chlorine. Imagine a ribeye, a nice marbled ribeye with that nice layer of fat marbled throughout it. The meat would be the hypochlorous acid. The marbled layer of fat, that's the hypochlorite ion. They're still both two pieces to one whole. You can't have the ribeye without the layer of fat or without the meat. You have to have both to have a good ribeye. So it's the same thing here. Hypochlorous acid, hypochlorite ion, both make up free chlorine, and the totals have to equal 100%. So if we look at 8.4 for pH, our chlorine's effectiveness is roughly 9%. So we'll say 9% hypochlorous acid. That would then mean it has to be 91% hypochlorite ion. You see? I hope that makes sense. So ideally, we want to maintain the pH then between 7.2 and 7.6, because that is essential in ensuring our ORP remains within the target range. Cyanuric acid used in swimming pools can protect the free chlorine from UV rays, but it has a very complex relationship with ORP. Cyanuric acid bonds the chlorine to form chlorinated cyanurates, which protect chlorine from sunlight, but also reduce the amount of hypochlorous acid available. This binding effect can lower ORP because it decreases the concentration of the most effective oxidizing form of chlorine. However, cyanuric acid can also cause a temporary spike in ORP in the early morning. This phenomena occurs because overnight, the pool water is shielded from UV light, allowing more hypochlorous acid to accumulate. When sunlight is less intense in the early morning, this higher concentration of hypochlorous acid is reflected in the ORP chain. ORP reading. We also see that the bond between hypochlorous acid and cyanuric acid is more stable in the presence of UV. So as the sun comes out, it increases the stability of this bond, which means less hypochlorous acid is roaming free. So as the day progresses, UV exposure increases, the CYA hypochlorous acid bond becomes more dominant, reducing the amount of active hypochlorous acid and thus lowering the ORP. Temperature influences chemical reactions in the pool. This includes the activity of chlorine. As water temperature increases, the rate of chemical reactions generally increases, which can lead to higher ORP readings. However, if the temperature rises too high, chlorine can dissipate more quickly, potentially lowering the ORP over time if chlorine levels are not adequately maintained. Organic contaminants such as sweat, oils, urine, cosmetics introduced by people can decrease the amount of hypochlorous acid, can consume the amount of free chlorine, leading to a reduction in ORP. We know as chlorine tries to sanitize and disinfect, it uses itself up. A high bather load introduces more of these contaminants, which can quickly deplete the chlorine that's available for oxidation. This results in a drop in ORP. It's critical to monitor and adjust chlorine levels during and after periods of heavy pool usage to maintain proper ORP levels. TDS, total dissolved solids, that includes salts, minerals, organic matter, all of those things that accumulate in the pool over time, that too can affect your ORP readings. High TDS level can interfere with the sensitivity of the ORP sensor. That leads to inaccurate readings. Managing TDS by partially draining and refilling can help ensure the ORP measures remain reliable. Other chemicals in the water, such as oxidizers, like, I don't know, H2O2, or reducing agents such as sodium thiol sulfate or ascorbic acid, can directly affect your ORP reading. Oxidizers will generally increase the ORP, while reducing agents will lower it. Understanding how these chemicals interact with chlorine is crucial for accurately interpreting those ORP readings. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you recall the 2016 Olympics in Brazil, the swimming portion, the dive games specifically. In 2016, that pool turned green. It turned green. All eyes in the world looking at that pool. The most popular pool in the world that week, those weeks, and it turned green. So that pool was built similarly to all of the other pools they use in the Olympic Games, the pools they use in the FINA Games, and a lot of the pools they use across the United States. It was one of those vinyl pools where they seam the liner in place. They set this pool up to use liquid chlorine, and they set it up with ORP. 
Now we know from what we just talked about that ORP does not measure the chlorine level directly. Chlorine affects the oxidizing capacity. ORP measures the oxidizing capacity of the water. So really what it's measuring is the effect of the chlorine on the water. So by measuring the effect, it can indirectly determine whether or not there's enough chlorine. So that's the setup they have here. It is well known in Brazil that the water has a very high sulfide level, which gives the water kind of a rotten egg kind of smell to it. And everybody there is aware of this, but they also don't want any of the bathers from other countries to have a poor experience. They want everybody to have a great time in Brazil. This is great for tourism. It's great for people coming there. Everybody's going to be talking about it. So what they do is they ensure they have a large amount of hydrogen peroxide on hand. If anybody should start to talk about the smell of the water or complain, they'll treat it right away, no problems. So a few days into the dive games, I believe it's the Australian team, was complaining that the pool water had kind of a musky smell to it. So the operator of this pool jumped right on it. He took that hydrogen peroxide and he poured it directly into the swimming pool, which completely oxidized the sulfides really quick. Smell went away. But it's important to remember, hydrogen peroxide is also a chlorine neutralizer. So in adding the hydrogen peroxide to the water, completely neutralizes the amount of chlorine in the pool as well. But not to fear, we have ORP, right? The ORP sensor will see that we don't have enough chlorine and it will send a message to the meter and start having that peristaltic pump pump more liquid into the system. But remember, ORP measures the oxidizing capacity of water, not the chlorine level. Chlorine affects the oxidizing capacity, so it's indirectly determining whether or not there's enough chlorine. But you know what else affects the oxidizing capacity of water? Hydrogen peroxide. So the ORP sensors picking this up, thinking to itself, geez, we got plenty of chlorine in this water. We're not going to add any more. So it tells the peristaltic pump not to, and it doesn't pump any chlorine in. Now we have a pool that's sitting pretty close to being on the equator with no chlorine, no disinfectant because hydrogen peroxide by itself is an awful disinfectant, and it quickly turns green overnight. Pool Magazine is the hottest new publication for the pool and spa industry, featuring up-to-the-minute news on what's happening in the pool world in a fresh new stylized format with our mobile-friendly app. Pool Magazine is the app for keeping your fingers on the pulse of the pool industry. You'll find featured news, editorials, podcasts, videos, and more on the Pool Magazine app. Download on Google Play and the App Store. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable, and these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with a pro's time and comfort in mind, the patented double locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleanings faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. That is amazing. I could actually go out and make money doing filter cleans with people like this. If there were Aquastar filters out there, then I could be a filter cleaner girl. You could, we can do that. Make it happen. Let's make it happen. Todd? Love it. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Jules the Pool Girl. Again, Aquastar Pool Products Pipeline Filters. Super okay. easy, right? Super easy. Now we have a pool that's sitting pretty close to being on the equator with no chlorine, no disinfectant, because hydrogen peroxide by itself is an awful disinfectant, and it quickly turns green overnight. That's a good example of how other things can affect ORP. One of the more subtle aspects of managing ORP in an outdoor pool is understanding the daily fluctuation caused by cyanuric acid. As mentioned earlier, cyanuric acid bonds with free chlorine, forming a protective shield if you will, that prevents the chlorine from breaking down too quickly under UV light. However, this interaction also causes variations in ORP readings throughout the day. In the early morning when UV exposure is minimal, the free chlorine, especially hypochlorous acid, in the pool is at its most active. This is because overnight, without sunlight, to break down the chlorine, more hypochlorous acid accumulates, leading to a higher ORP reading. The cyanuric acid is still present, but 
has not yet had a chance to engage fully in protecting the chlorine from the UV light, allowing more hypochlorous acid to remain active. As the sun rises and UV exposure increases, cyanuric acid begins to bind more to chlorine to protect it from degradation. This process reduces the amount of hypochlorous acid available in the water, which in turn lowers the ORP. The ORP sensor pricks up this reduction as the day progresses, reflecting the decreased oxidation potential of the water. It can be more pronounced on a sunny day in pools that have high cyanuric acid levels. As more chlorine is sequestered by the cyanuric acid, less remains available for immediate oxidation. <coughs> Understanding this daily fluctuation is vital for pool operators. It can influence when you decide to test the water and make chemical adjustments. Monitoring ORP at different times throughout the day and under different weather conditions can provide a more comprehensive picture of the pool's chemistry and help you maintain optimal disinfection levels. Regular testing of water chemistry, including ORP, free chlorine, pH, cyanuric acid, total dissolved solids levels, is essential for maintaining water quality. Automated ORP sensors and controllers can provide continuous monitoring, allowing for real-time adjustments to the chlorine dosing and pH control systems. It's important to calibrate these sensors regularly to ensure accurate readings. Achieving the right balance between chlorine and pH is key in maintaining an ideal ORP. When adding chlorine, it's important to consider the current pH and adjust accordingly to ensure that chlorine remains in the active form hypochlorous acid, at least as much of it as we can. Automated dosing systems that can adjust both chlorine and pH simultaneously are particularly effective in maintaining these stable ORP levels. Cyanuric acid levels should be carefully monitored to avoid suppressing ORP. Keeping CYA levels within the recommended range between 30 to 50 parts per million ensures that chlorine remains effective while still being protected from UV degradation. If cyanuric acid levels become too high, partial draining of the pool may be necessary to lower that concentration. Quick response to contaminants such as organic matter or environmental debris is critical for maintaining ORP. After events like heavy bather loads or rain, it may be necessary to shock the pool to restore chlorine levels and raise ORP back to the safe range. I know, shock, superchlorinate, breakpoint chlorinate, whatever you want to call it, I'm fine with it. Just add more chlorine. Let's go with that. In some cases, additional oxidizers such as ozone or UV can help maintain the ORP by reducing the overall demand. However, it's important to understand how these systems interact with chlorine to avoid artificially inflating ORP readings that don't accurately reflect the pool's disinfection capability. So here's the thing. Your ability to understand and manage ORP is crucial. ORP is more than just a number. It's a reflection of the water's overall ability to keep contaminants at bay. By mastering the factors that influence ORP, chlorine levels, pH, cyanuric acid, and more, you can ensure that your pools remain in optimal condition. Given the daily fluctuations in ORP due to cyanuric acid, interactions with chlorine. It's advisable to conduct ORP testing at various times throughout the day. This practice allows you to capture a comprehensive view of the water's disinfection potential. By understanding the natural rise and fall of ORP, you can better time your chemical adjustments to maintain consistent water quality. For example, if you notice your ORP tends to drop significantly in the afternoon due to high UV exposure, Consider adjusting your chlorine dosing schedule to compensate for this. Adding chlorine or adjusting pH levels in the late morning or early afternoon could help maintain a more consistent ORP throughout the day. Different types of pools require different approaches to ORP. For instance, indoor pools typically have more stable ORP readings due to the lack of direct sunlight and lower bather loads. However, the air quality in indoor pools, particularly the presence of combined chloramines can affect ORP and should be monitored closely. On the other hand, outdoor pools, especially those with heavy use, are more susceptible to fluctuations in ORP due to factors like sunlight, temperature, and organic contaminants. For these pools, maintaining a lower cyanuric acid level can help ensure that enough chlorine, enough active chlorine, 
is available throughout the day, even under intense UV exposure. Modern pool management systems offer advanced ORP control features that can significantly enhance your ability to maintain water quality. These systems often include automated chlorine dosing and pH control integrated with ORP sensors that adjust chemical levels in real time based on continuous monitoring. For large commercial pools and high-end residential pools, Investing in such a system can pay off by ensuring consistent water quality, reducing chemical costs, and minimizing the need for manual adjustments. Some systems even allow remote monitoring and alerts, enabling you to manage multiple pools efficiently without the need to be on site constantly. As a pool service company owner, educating your clients about ORP and its importance can set you apart from your competitors. Many pool owners may not be familiar with ORP, focusing instead on traditional measures like chlorine concentration and pH, how ORP works, and why it's a critical indicator of water quality, you can help your clients appreciate the value of your services more. Additionally, offering regular reports that include ORP readings and explanations can build trust with your clients, showing them that their pool is being managed with the highest level of expertise. Sometimes you may encounter strange, off-the-wall, unusual ORP readings that don't correspond to expected chlorine levels or pH. In such cases, it's important to investigate potential causes rather than simply adjusting the chemicals. Factors like sensor calibration issues, the presence of unexpected contaminants, or even electrical interference can lead to inaccurate ORP readings. When faced with such scenarios, conduct a thorough check of the pool's water chemistry, review the recent maintenance activities, and if necessary, recalibrate your ORP sensors. Clean them. Those probes do foul, and they only work as well as they are clean. Taking a systematic approach ensures that any issues are correctly identified and resolved, maintaining the integrity of your ORP management. ORP is a sophisticated aspect of pool service that, when mastered, can elevate the quality of your work. Also set your business apart in the market. By paying close attention to the factors that influence ORP, such as chlorine levels, pH, cyanuric acid, environmental conditions, you can ensure that your clients' pools remain safe, clean, and inviting. By leveraging this technology, optimizing your testing schedules, and educating your clients, you can deliver a superior service. Jack's Magic Products is your industry leader in identifying, removing, and preventing stains. How? With a range of high-performance, eco-friendly products, keeping pools safe, clean, and ready to use all year round. The Jack's Magic 3-Step Program is a quick and effective way to remove stains and scaling. First, we identify the problem, then our top quality products will remove the discoloration. Finally, our preventative solutions will keep your pool looking like new for much longer. Get helpful tips and check out our product catalog today at jacksmagic.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at blu-rayxl.com. Blu-ray all day. Perfect toss. Okay, welcome back. Now finding a need or a problem that isn't being fully addressed by your competitors. By identifying and serving an underserved niche, you can not only differentiate your business, but tap into a loyal customer base that values your specialized expertise. In the context of swimming pool service, a niche could be any specialized area where customer needs are not being fully met. This could range from offering advanced water chemistry services to focusing on eco-friendly maintenance solutions. Understanding what a niche is and why it matters is the first step in carving your own space. Let's face it, swimming pool service in most areas is an oversaturated market. We need some type of specialization that can set us apart. A niche allows you to become the go-to expert in a specific area. That enables you to command higher pricing and build a more loyal customer base. Instead of trying to be all things to all people, a niche strategy focuses your efforts on delivering unparalleled value to a targeted segment of pool owners. Think about services like luxury pool maintenance for high-end properties. 
energy efficient pool upgrades or treatment systems that allow a much, much lower use of chlorine, those quote unquote chemical free things that we know aren't extremely never truly chemical free, but could result in the ability to maintain a much lower disinfectant level than in some other app of it, in some other application. Each of these examples represents a potential niche where customer needs might be underserved by the broader market. Your years in the pool industry has given you insight into reoccurring problems or unmet needs that others may miss. Start by reflecting on the challenges that you've faced and the solutions that you've developed. This could be the seeds of a profitable niche. Consider what you do better than anyone else in your market. Maybe you have an exceptional understanding of advanced water chemistry, or maybe you've developed a more efficient way to maintain and manage large commercial pools. It's your unique strengths that can guide you toward a niche where you can dominate. Start by brainstorming. Generate a list of potential niches by combining your industry knowledge with your unique skills. Don't censor yourself at this stage. Think broadly about all possibilities. We can narrow this list later on based on feasibility, demand, and profitability. So don't stress it now. A gap in a market is an opportunity for service that isn't fully covered by current offerings. To identify these gaps, you'll need to dive deep into what's currently available, what's missing. Consider whether there are specific customer needs that aren't being addressed by your competition. Take a close look at what your competitors are offering. What service do they provide? Are there areas where they are underperforming or where they lack expertise? Understanding your competitors' weaknesses can help you pinpoint where you can step in and offer something better. Direct feedback from customers can be invaluable. Engage with your clients through surveys, casual conversations, or even formal interviews to understand their pain points and unmet needs. Tools like Google Forms or specialized industry forums can help you to gather and analyze this feedback efficiently. It's not enough to just identify the niche. You need to ensure that there's sufficient demand to make it profitable. Use tools like Google Trends, keyword research, access the interest in services related to your niche ideas. Pay attention to seasonal trends, geographic differences, and how interest in your potential niche has evolved over time. Evaluate whether or not the niche you're considering is financially viable. Calculate your potential profit margins by comparing the costs of providing the service to the prices you can charge. Consider whether customers in this niche are willing to pay a premium for a specialized expertise. Think beyond the initial opportunity. Can this niche grow over time? Can you expand your offerings within that niche to broaden your customer base without diluting your brand? Assess the scalability of your niche to ensure it aligns with your long-term business goals. All of these things are important. For going all in, try running like a pilot program, something that you can use to test out your niche idea. Offer the services to a select group of clients. Gather feedback to refine your offerings and ensure there's a genuine demand. Use the feedback from your pilot program to make necessary adjustments. Are customers satisfied with the service? Did it meet their expectations? Did you uncover additional needs that you hadn't considered? Continuous iteration based on customer input is key to refining your niche offering. An MVP, minimum viable product, allows you to test your niche with a simplified version of your service. This could be a basic version of an advanced water treatment service or a geographic rollout of an eco-friendly pool maintenance package. The goal is to evaluate the demand before investing heavily in full-scale implementation. Clearly, your value proposition should clearly communicate what sets your niche apart from standard offerings. Why should customers choose your specialized service over a generalist competitor? Focus on the unique benefits and outcomes that your niche service delivers. Your brand should resonate with the specific needs and values of your niche market. That includes everything from your logo and website to messaging and customer interactions. Ensure that your branding reflects the premium, specialized nature of your services. Traditional targeting approaches may not work for a niche market. Instead, focus on channels that directly reach your target audience, such as online forums, or partnerships with complementary businesses. Tailor your messaging to highlight how your service uniquely solves the problems that your niche customers face. As your niche service gains traction, consider expanding your offerings 
to address additional needs within the same market. We're looking for greater product inclusion among our existing clientele. For example, if you specialize in eco-friendly pool maintenance, you might add services like energy efficient pool equipment or sustainable landscaping, collaborate with other businesses that serve the same market. This could include relationships or partnerships with pool equipment suppliers, real estate developers, or even luxury property management companies. These partnerships can enhance your service offerings and expand your reach within your niche. The pool service industry, like any other, is subject to trends and technological advancements. Stay informed. Learn about new developments in water chemistry, pool equipment, and customer preferences. Attend industry conferences, subscribe to trade publications, and engage with online communities to help you stay ahead of the curve. One of the benefits of serving a niche market is the potential for strong customer loyalty. Focus on building long-term relationships by consistently delivering exceptional service and going the extra mile for your clients. Satisfied customers can become your biggest advocates. They can help you grow your business through referrals and repeat business. Niche markets often come with a smaller customer base, which can be a challenge. To mitigate this, focus on maximizing lifetime value of each customer by offering additional services, creating loyalty programs, maintain high levels of customer satisfaction. As your niche becomes more successful, it's likely you'll gain new competitors. Stay ahead by continuously innovating and improving your service offerings. Maintain a strong focus on your unique value proposition and consider expanding into related niches to diversify your business. Again, remember the key, first we get a foot in the door, then greater product inclusion. The needs of your niche market can change over time. Stay flexible, be ready to pivot if necessary. Regularly reassess your niche's viability and be open to evolving your service offerings to meet new challenges or to take advantage of emerging opportunities. Discovering an underserved niche is not luck. It's about strategic thinking, thorough research, and a willingness to innovate. As you move forward, keep in mind that the key to success lies in your ability to understand specific needs of your market and deliver a service that meets those needs better than anyone else. Set clear goals. Define what success will look like for your niche service, whether it's achieving a certain revenue target, capturing a specific market share, or expanding your geographic reach. Just make sure you have clear goals. These will help to guide your business decisions and keep you focused on what truly matters. Your goals with the unique opportunities presented by your niche. This ensures that every step you take is moving you closer to dominating that segment of the market. Outline your strategy for market entry, growth, and long-term sustainability. Include a thorough analysis of your niche market, your competitive advantages, marketing strategies, financial projections, and your contingency plans. This plan will serve as your roadmap, helping you navigate the complexities of building a successful niche business. Your marketing efforts should be as specialized as your service offerings. Invest in marketing channels that reach your specific audience, whether it's through online advertising, industry-specific events, or partnerships with related businesses. Your messaging to emphasize the unique benefits of your niche services, positioning your company as the expert in the field. Networking within your niche is crucial for growth. Engage with industry peers, attend relative conferences, and participate in forums and groups where the target audience is active. These connections can lead to referrals, partnerships, new business opportunities that can help you establish your presence in the niche market. Even after you've established a foothold in your niche, the work doesn't stop. You have to continuously seek out ways to improve your services, whether it's adopting new technologies, refining your processes, or expanding your offerings. Stay open to feedback from your clients and use it to drive innovation. Ensure that you remain, head, remain ahead of your competition. While specialization is key in a niche market, it is also important to remember to remain flexible. The needs of your niche market may evolve and new opportunities may arise, but be prepared to adapt your service to explore these adjacent niches if the market demands it. Flexibility will enable you to pivot 
when necessary so you can sustain your long-term growth. Listen, now's the time to put this plan into action. Start by conducting thorough market research, refine your niche ideas, test your concepts with real customers. The path to discovering an underserved niche may require effort and persistence, but the rewards, the rewards in terms of customer loyalty and business growth are well worth it. Take charge of your business's future by finding and filling that niche, and then set yourself on a course for long-term success in your market, in the swimming pool industry. So that's what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. ORP, oxidation reduction potential, how to make the most of it, what affects it, how to manage it properly. Then also take a look at your market. Let's see if we have an underserved niche that you could capitalize on. That's it for today. I'm Rudy Stankwitz. This is the Talking Pools Podcast. Until next time, be good, be safe.